We're seeing this uh, nuclear uranium renaissance. People have been talking about it for a while and it's it's starting to come to fruition. And I'll just kind of put that as a, uh, a note today, right in the, the news, you know, COP28, US and UK to push pledge to triple nuclear power by 2050. So that's just from COP28. We're gonna be diving into uranium. It's uh, quite a market it's had well, in the last year, but especially lately, by far uh, with all data, nuclear is the cleanest, safest, uh, energy source out there by long shot. Uh, and of course there's, you know, competing interests, whether it's oil and gas, whether there's other types of energy that want to mix that up a bit, but it is nice, especially with the headline too, coming out of COP28 of this acknowledgement now by not only the nuclear uh, association energy finally being heard scientists reiterating, no, listen, this is part of the solution. We need to move forward. Then what does that look like? Uh, and uh, you know it's so important that Canada plays that role because, yes, Kazakhstan has massive deposits, has very you know kind of low hanging fruit to some degree, but we have a lot of geopolitical issues that are not resolving themselves anytime soon or, or very quickly. There's a world energy crisis going on, and we can be a part of that solution, where we can stand up to regimes that are evil. We can stand up and yet find solutions, which would only help Canadians anyway. So I think Canada can be very helpful, both in oil and uranium, because and uranium, we're very fortunate to have the highest grades in the world. You know, we have a, a really big uh, leader in the industry um, with chemical, Mr. Tim Gitzel leading it. I think they're a fantastic company and a fantastic group of people. Um, the two things that I have seen in the uranium space, and these are all the pictures of all the reactors, the big change I've seen, we have now a Democratic Party in power and they're pro-nuclear. Never had that before. Secondly, yeah. I think people have realized that um, much as we can dream and wish on a star, but, you know, solar and wind aren't ready to take that, you know, leadership that is simply because economics. Look, there's too many people starving for food in India and China that really don't care about polar bears in, in Canada. They just don't. Um, yes. Maslow hierarchy of needs until you have food security. You don't worry about self-actualization and, you know, et cetera. I have my own views on climate change. Um, but what I do know is you can't move out of the house of fossil fuels, uh, which generates 80% of our energy and say overnight, we're going to go over here. You can dream it. Politicians promise it. And that's how they stay in power by lying and say, oh yeah, we're going to get there. And then they can't. And now, now you've got an energy crisis. We have an energy crisis because politicians um, lied to yeah. the people and says solar and wind will do it. But, but they never take a first year of science, which says you have to have base load power, meaning that as long as humans habit is to have the most of our power use between four o'clock and nine o'clock at night, unless people are willing to you know we change the whole structure of our lives where certain countries eat at two o'clock in the morning you know that kind of thing yeah until change we need base load power and that's where i think nuclear power has always been a part of that solution i'm thankful finally that some greenies are saying okay nuclear power is the only base load power that's clean there's no carbon freight whatsoever so i think that change has really happened and that's why last year uh, Peter Groskopf, who I think is a genius, he he took all that demand from fund managers and set up this physical trust called SPOT. And it and it and it as it as he picked up every time it traded above premium, he would sell into it and buy more physical. So you know they bought 50, 60 million pounds last year. I can't recall, and that was very helpful. It lifted uranium from 30 to 60 now to you know more or closer to 50, but. That this has been a dramatic change politically where nuclear power is not the bad boy people thought it was. You know, what we are seeing right now, you know, we've seen a reduction in safe places. Canada, U.S., Australia, Niger. You know, we've seen some development projects in the pipeline in, in these areas, uh, but certainly not enough to replace any big gaps that emerge.